The pictures tell a grim story. Someone broke windows and trashed the Salvation Army in Brooklyn Park the night before volunteers planned to give away coats to people in need. Security footage shows a man putting the new coats in a pile and then lighting them on fire. Friday was a day to clean up at the Salvation Army. As Delane Cleveland reports, an organization that provides help for thousands of people now needs some help of its own. The sight of vandalized vehicles, shattered glass, and the charred remains of a church pew greeted employees of Brooklyn Park's Salvation Army early Friday morning. Our staff walked in this morning. We looked at each other and, and we all just broke down and cried because we know what it means to us, but more importantly, we know what this center means to Brooklyn Park. Josh Polanco leads the Brooklyn Park Service Center. He says that shortly before 11 p.m. on Thursday, someone broke into the building, smashed a number of windows, and intentionally started a fire in the sanctuary. The damage is extensive. I mean, just windows alone, I'm thinking it's probably over $100,000 worth of damage. Investigators say that thanks to the building's sprinkler system, the fire damage was relatively minimal. There's not much damage, which is great, but it hits a very charitable organization. The service center was planning for a winter coat distribution for families in need and some of those very coats were used to start the fire. It was intentional evil wanting to just destroy. And that's what I don't get. Security cameras caught footage of a young man breaking into the building and setting the fire. Police arrested a Champlin man who they believe is responsible. His motive remains unclear. We want him to get the help. Obviously, he needs it. And if there's something we can do in the process, great. He has our prayers. I prayed for him last night. Meanwhile, the Salvation Army's bell ringing campaign for the holiday season kicks off next week. Unfortunately, some of the money that they raise will have to help this place get back up and running. In Brooklyn Park, Delane Cleveland, CCX News. Meanwhile, Brooklyn Park police are investigating an overnight case of shots fired. Multiple 911 calls eventually brought police to the 5900 block of 83rd Parkway North, where officers located 25 spent shell casings. Police also found a home struck by gunfire. There were no reports of any injuries, and police believe the home struck was not targeted. The case remains under investigation. The Brooklyn Center police chief has been on the job for almost six months, and he's outlining plans for the future. Reporter Sonia Gowen sat down for a one-on-one -on -one interview with the new chief. It's been a little bit challenging. Chief Kellis McDaniel started the job as the community was trying to heal after the fatal shooting last year of Dante Wright. The past few years have been really rough in Brooklyn Center. The chief was working for the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office when the Dante Wright protest happened outside the police department. The first few days here was a little rough between the community and PD. He was part of a team to bridge the gap between concerned citizens and cops. I mean, finally we got a chance where people started communicating and then... Um, we started talking about what the problematic things were. The 55-year-old chief says that experience helped him to prepare for his current role. Last year, actually, um, I actually thought about retiring, and then I thought, you know what, what a great opportunity to be part of change. One of his top priorities is to get the department fully staffed. Currently, the department is down around 12 full-time officers. Fully staffed would be 49, and with that, we have specialty units that we would like. Cracking down on crime is also top on the agenda. According to the chief, gun violence is on the rise. Crime here is still pretty steady. Um, along with gun violence, though, it's, it's pretty high. This summer, there were a few cases where automatic weapons were used. The chief would like to build a task force to take the dangerous weapons off the street. Meanwhile, there are increasing patrols in certain areas. We're trying to so-called, you know, integrate or, you know, uh, migrate certain sectors, which we call hotspots, which are problematic. Diversity and cultural training for the police department is also on the chief's to-do list. We have a huge Liberian population here in Brooklyn Center. Um, it'll help you in the long run as far as communication and um, bridging that gap. The chief says community engagement is essential. He says officers are interacting more with the public and business owners. If we can build that trust relationship again, I think these businesses will basically say, you know what, the, the police are on our side, PD is on our side, we can do this together. Striving for a safe and peaceful city where everyone can feel proud to call Brooklyn Center home. The community wants to feel safe, no matter what income level, what matter what dialect you speak.
diversity group, everybody deserves to, to feel safe. In Brooklyn Center, Sonia Goins, CCX News. Where would we be without just construction? If you want your roads, you want your buildings, you want your hospitals, your malls, you know, your stadiums, we need the people to build them. And they are professionals, and that's the biggest thing. It is a professional career. The construction industry has a story to tell, and it's being told through a female perspective. At Wyzetta High School, educators from Northern Michigan University and local companies hosted a Women in Construction event. Of all of the workers in construction, only 9% are women. Leaders in the field say that needs to change. Students could find out about a wide variety of career paths and apprenticeships where you can earn while you learn. I didn't know that it was like so easy to get yourself involved with construction and like there's a lot of like opportunities you can have so you can find something that you enjoy instead of just having like one job that you have to do. The jobs are like all different types of jobs but they all like somehow relate to each other. We want them to understand that it's not a boys only career field. It is definitely something that all girls have an opportunity to pursue. It's very rewarding. Golden Valley-based Mortensen Construction showcased its growing renewable energy part of its business, which representatives say now produces half of the company's revenue. A Sonneson Elementary School teacher got a grant from the Seven Dreams Foundation to create a mural in the hallway of the school. Students got their first look at the finished mural this week. Students worked in partnership with a local artist to create tiles that visually represent a positive I am statement. Kelly Betzold is the teacher who won the grant. The Wysetta boys soccer team took aim at a state championship Friday morning in a match that turned into a thriller. Jay Wilcox has the story. Top seed Wysetta ready to face third seed Woodbury for the state class 3A boys soccer title. Woodbury strikes off a long Zach Sorensen throw in. The header is knocked down, but Olin Francois puts it away about 14 minutes into the match for a 1-0 lead. Wyzetta answers as the long ball is chipped over to Mike Orlov, who settles it and gets to a better angle before ripping the left-footed shot in. The game is tied 1-1. Later in the first half, another long throw-in proves deadly. One, two, three headers with Francois scoring from close range. The Royals take a 2-1 lead into halftime. And it looks like that lead will hold up until with under two minutes left after the short corner kick, Charlie Pillar fires its stop, but Joey Barica slams the rebound in as Wyzetta evens it 2-2 with 1.42 left, and the teams head to overtime. An NOT Jackson Widman with a run up the left side. And he sneaks it through to Joe Highfield alone. The keeper blocks it, but it caroms off a defender and in. That's the state title winning goal for Highfield as Wyzetta wins its fourth state championship, 3-2 to two in overtime. Yeah, when he saved it, I was kind of bummed out. But then it was kind of, I think it just happened too fast. And it just, the kid was right there and it hit off him. And as soon as I turned back around and saw I was going in, and I saw everyone start cheering. I don't know, it was a feeling I've never really felt before. I was absolutely exhausted, but you always find a little bit more energy when you score. Um, you find a little extra, but as soon as the uh, ball went for the kickoff, you know, we just got to get back in and do our job. But in, in that moment, like Joe said, you know, just you can't describe it. It's just surreal. It never was in doubt that we were going to score. We were pressing them, getting after it, controlling the game towards the end, in my opinion. So no surprise, Joey Perica scored. Big time player, always there when we need him. A memorable ending to a great season for Wyzetta. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. Thanks, Jay. The state volleyball tournament gets underway next week. One local team won an epic section final in Class 4A. Two of the top prep volleyball teams in the state meeting for the Section 5 4A championship as Champlin Park faced Wyzetta. Set one, Carly Gilt passes to Conley Gargas, who sets to Marley Hansen. Her attack isn't returned, and the Rebels lead 11-9. Champlin Park led much of the first set. Sarah Moberg pushes one down the line for a point. Rebels up 16-13. Top-seeded Wynzetta comes back. Riley Kurth on the middle comes up with a big block, and it's tied 21-all. The Trojans fought off a couple of set points by the Rebels. Sophia Johnson passes to Caitlin Boat. A big match for a vote. He gets the kill, and Wyzetta goes on to win set one, 
Kemplin Park's Carly Gilk is tough to stop. She attacks and scores here. Rebels lead 8-7 in set two. Late in the set, Reese Axness sets up Lily Reese in the middle for an attack and kill. Champlain Park wins this one 26-24 to tie the match at a set apiece. Third set, and the Trojans go to Katie Kelsenberg, who powers a hit through hands and down for a point. Trojans up by two. Again, it's another two-point margin in the end. Olivia Swenson's swing is blocked. The block goes wide. The Trojans pull out a 25-23 win. The fourth set was tied at 20 before Wysetta closes the night by scoring the match's final five points. Olivia Swenson gets the kill for the last point of the match. Wysetta wins its third straight section title with a hard-fought five-set win over Champlain Park. They were amazing. I have a lot of respect for them and that team. Um, we already played them in the season we lost. Um, yeah, they were amazing. I have a lot of respect for them and their coach and the girls. Lots of good volleyball. The state tournament starts next Wednesday in St. Paul. That's all for sports. More CCX News after this. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.